There were moments when it became clear that COVID-19 was going to be a significant event. There is an element of excitement and recognition that you're a part of history, a significant part of history. Throughout the last three and a half years with a job, it was so very challenging. My name is Eileen Devilla, and I am the Medical Officer of Health for the City of Toronto. I have the privilege and honour of leading Toronto Public Health, Canada's largest local public health agency. I was just very fortunate that I had an opportunity to pursue an internship in the United Nations system in Vienna. And it was through that experience that I learned that there was this whole practice of international health. I did very briefly practice uh, family medicine while I was uh, still training to become a specialist. To be able to serve as the medical officer of health for the city that I live in and where I've chosen to raise my family was, you know, to me, the ultimate privilege. We were still learning about this virus. We had no vaccines at the time. It was so very challenging. And we were going through, um, you know, the first kind of closures and restrictions and asking people to stay home. I started wearing a scarf on most days and that got noticed when we were doing COVID briefings on a daily basis. It became a moment of levity when things were so heavy, especially early on in the COVID response. You know, to me, that was part of the forming of relationship between myself and the people of Toronto. What we're seeing now is, you know, significant mental health challenges. They were there before the pandemic, but I think throughout the world, we're seeing an increase in mental health challenges from a public health perspective, addressing those mental health challenges, particularly those that we're seeing in our children and youth, has got to be near the top of the agenda. Disinformation can be shared so quickly, not just from person to person, but from person to entire populations in a matter of seconds. That was a significant challenge for sure from a public health perspective as part of the COVID-19 response. Let's start in a non-emergency time to actually have relationship so that when that next emergency comes, the easier it is to combat misinformation and disinformation. There are a million Filipinos in Canada. But I would like to see more Filipinos in the ranks of medicine, in the ranks of engineering schools, amongst law classes, other professional schools, to help our young people see themselves and aspire to those tables. I see that I have a responsibility, both as a Filipina, but also just as a professional and somebody who is a concerned member of our community. How do I help young people be successful? If that's what you want to do, there are ways and paths to get there. And I think people just need to know that it exists as a possibility.